Hello, my name is Jennifer Lacey, and this presentation is going to cover um, a case of congestive heart failure exacerbation with one of my patients I previously had the privilege of working with. This is for class nursing 442, nursing case management of vulnerable populations. So we meet Mr. Edgardo. He's a 56-year-old male patient of Hispanic ethnicity, and he works in management of a construction company and considers himself to be of working socioeconomic status, but still requires financial assistance for his health care. He's covered by prior, private insurance, lives at home with his wife and two, or wife and son, and also has a daughter as well. And his underlying conditions include CHF, hypertension, diabetes type 2, and reoccurring pulmonary edema. And he clinically presents with complaints of dyspnea, dyspnea wheezing, bilateral lower extremity edema, and shortness of breath on exertion. Edgardo has the capacity to be completely independent in his self-care and his self-management. He's ambulatory, uh, has normal range of motion in all his extremities, uh, no neuromuscular deficit, and even has a personal vehicle at home where he can go to the grocery store, make his doctor's appointments, go to pharmacies to get his medications, and do all other activities of daily life. Given Edgardo's underlying conditions, his treatment demands are high. Um, diabetes and hypertension alone require a lot of monitoring monitoring at home. Um, he also needs uh, pretty regular doctor's visits for medication management, um, check in to make sure everything's okay and where he's at, where his doctor prefers him to be clinically. Um, also, given diabetes and hypertension, CHF, it also requires um, some dietary modifications that Edgardo likes to adhere to, but has a trouble when he participates in like family occasions where there's a lot of food around, um, but just does the best he can given with what he's working with. What he's working with. So the primary focus is to stabilize this patient and prevent readmission through empowering the patient to manage his self-care effectively. Um, for our purposes, we want to make sure Edgardo has access to his medication, resources to obtain his medication, and make sure he is actually taking his medication every day. Also, he needs to learn about low sodium diet and a carbohydrate controlled diet um, so he manages his fluid balance and blood sugar effectively, um, but also uh, doing things like weighing himself every day and monitoring for any weight loss or weight gain that might be a sign of uh, fluid imbalance. Um, Edgardo also needs to make sure that he sees his primary care provider and follows up with his medication um, regimen and fulfilling prescriptions and um, any sort of uh, primary prevention uh, techniques that his primary doctor might prescribe. Patient disposition, this patient will return home. He's, um, he doesn't require any uh, further transitional care, so to say like rehabilitation or skilled nursing or that sort of thing. Um, he's independent, ambulatory, and able to return home to his family. So the primary nursing case management strategy for this patient are assessing barriers to discharge. Uh, scheduling that follow-up appointment, the initial one for Edgardo after his hospitalization. Um, providing Edgardo resources to maybe he can get discount prescriptions or go to a special pharmacy that's able to provide that. Um, ensuring that there's clear communication across the board with the multidisciplinary team, uh, such as nursing staff with case management staff or either nursing and doctors, that sort of thing. Um, and keeping everyone updated on what the patient condition is from day to day. This patient is expected to stay in the hospital from one to three days, so we want to make sure we do all we can to meet that goal. On a patient level, we plan to implement um, that Edgardo is following his dietary restrictions and uh, modifications. He does know all about his medications and why they're important to take them, and that he uh, increases his physical activity home just to 
for many reasons, manage his cardiovascular state and um, manage his weight effectively. On a systems level, we're monitoring the patient daily um, through daily blood work, taking his vital signs pretty frequently, uh, very regularly checking his blood sugar and constantly monitoring his heart rhythm. Um, every shift, twice a shift, we were assessing this patient, um, all systems, skin, respiratory, musculoskeletal, cardiovascular, but most importantly, um, a focused breathing powder assessment and taking a look at the edema that's present in his bilateral lower extremities. Um, nursing case management, working on scheduling following that follow-up appointment again, um, and again, just working on that clear communication across the board. So on a patient level scale, nursing was intervening with the Gardo just to make sure he understands the importance of um, following through after his acute care. Um, we did a thorough assessment of self-care deficits and noticed that there were none. Um, and we worked on providing education for Edgardo for how he can modify his diet according to um, just having CHF, hypertension, and um, diabetes. Um, we also provided him resources and actually specific pharmacies where he can fill his prescriptions and actually be at a reduced cost. Um, we educated him about his about his medications that he's taking at home, um, what are side, side effects that he might encounter, when to call the doctor, and to make sure that he plans in advance of when he will run out of his medications to plan to call the, um, the doctor to get that refill prescription. Um, we also really want to stress that he knew what signs and symptoms of CHF exacerbation were, so that once he was starting to notice the onset of those symptoms, he can notify his primary doctor before it getting so bad that he'd have to come to the emergency room for an acute care hospitalization. On a systems level, we worked a lot with pharmacological management of this patient, um, telemetry monitoring and beta blocker administration, um, Lasix through the IV, solumedrol, breathing treatments as needed for the wheezing, um, oxygen therapy, um, physical therapy evaluation, occupational therapy evaluation, um, and just noticing for any deficit and also monitoring the progress of his clinical state where Edgardo was doing. Um, we assessed um, Edgardo's self-care literacy and any education that we provide him, we make sure that he verbalized understanding. Since uh, English is his, Edgardo's second language, we wanted to cater towards that, provide tra translators when need be, and make sure that the terms were understandable and that Edgardo can give kind of like a verbal feedback of like, oh yes, I do understand this, and even um, a successful like self-administration of an insulin pen injection so he could carry on with that regimen at home. Our textbook defines utilization review as the evaluation of medical necessity, appropriateness, and efficacy of the use of health care services, procedures, and facilities to provide high quality patient care in a cost effective manner. We highly stress this in my facility to provide highest quality of care with minimizing costs, seeing that we are a nonprofit hospital. So for Edgardo, any sort of procedure, treatment, tests, anything, we would ensure that. We're doing what's medically necessary, but also being mindful of any waste of uh, medical supplies or not ordering erroneous labs or any sort of diagnostic workup. Quality and safety are also huge topics in the hospital setting to make sure that we're continually assessing and reassessing our quality of care and make sure we are effectively doing our job and leaving our patients satisfied with their care while maintaining safety through, throughout the entire hospital stay. Our facility offers a phone call for our patients upon their discharge and once they go home, and just offers a survey of how they felt the care was, how effectively they felt their pain manage, was managed, um, how much they knew about the medications they were receiving, and just their overall satisfaction. Um, in the hospital, we look at more on a statistic statistics base. So we look at call light answering time, um, like our throughput from our ER to our hospital rooms, and that sort of thing. 
Um, but we continually ask, or ask ourselves, you know, what safety measures can we implement? Can we better identify patients who are at fall risks by giving them things such as yellow socks, armbands, and then highlighting their chart and then their name on the assignment board? Um, we are also assessing the patient's quality of care through, you know, what's their status now compared to what they came in like, or, you know, have they acquired any sort of injury, any sort of adverse effect during their hospital stay, and have we done measures to prevent that sort of adverse reaction or side effect from the medications we're administering? So how can we tell that we're doing our job on a patient level? Well, in my opinion, I think if the patient is feeling empowered and motivated, they verbally say they're feeling better, clinically their status is improved by normalization of vital signs or, you know, clear chest x-ray, that sort of thing, then we've done our job. Um, I think we're effective if they follow up with their primary care provider, um, you know, adhere to their diet more appropriately at home, increase their physical activity, and um, comply with their prescribed medications. I always joke with my patients, you know, I prefer to see you out on the street. I don't want to see you back in the hospital. And I always make sure that they're empowered to take care when they go home, to self-take care and continue on with the work they have done in the hospital. Clinically speaking, on a systems level, we can see if all of our efforts um, have improved our patient status by seeing that the patient's symptoms are managed. They, um, in this case of CHF exacerbation, have improved breathing pat pattern, are able to tolerate more activity on room air. Um, their blood sugar levels are more co better controlled. Um, the swelling on the feet has gone down. And um, that sort of thing that we can just monitor the clinical progress of this patient. I want to thank you for listening to my presentation. And it's been a wonderful eight weeks working with you all. Take care.